Welcome to Coffee and Tequila, the morning show on Mondays, late show on Fridays, which doesn't ever apply. I'm so tired. <laughs> Welcome to the Coffee and Tequila Sunday brunch show. My name is Zach. My name is Alistair. And we are husbands, we are lovers, we are married. Um, before we start getting back into Monday uh, uh, news episodes and hot topics and all mm-hmm. of that, we're just, we just have a quick Sunday brunch episode for everybody. And so... Um, yeah, Sunday brunch episodes are just going to be... I did one the last time. I think that was the very last episode I actually put out. And so we're doing another one today. And I'd like to kind of make these like a regular thing, maybe like one or two a month, where just they're just kind of... Ch- a little bit. Yeah, they're just Gabby episodes, a little bit of chat, you know? That, a little bit of chat. I like that because... A little bit of crack. That way we can just like flow from like topic to topic to topic yeah. as we go. Um, well, and it's not like we don't actually have like hot topics or anything like that. We're kind of just talking to just each talking. other, I guess. Yeah. But talking to each other while like facing one direction. Exactly. Y'all have <laughs> brunch with us and we have mimosas today. Alistair made us some pretty nice well, mimosas. So I heard of this new cocktail that's mm. really taken to the streets, guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, they call it a mimosa. A mimosa. A mimosa. So what you do is you combine freshly squeezed orange juice with, get this, champagne. I can't d- tell if you're doing a bit. What? Are you doing a bit? <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, I was like, yeah. I, was, I was like, is the pronunciation make it different? <laughs> it's, 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 it's with champagne. Champagne. So for those of you who haven't heard of what a mimosa is, that that is what we're having. We're this having morning. mimosas, basically. With this coffee. episode of Coffee and Tequila is kind of being sponsored by Helix Sleep, as always, and we will let you know a little bit more about them a little bit later. Um, we've been real good about not drinking, though. Like we did a. Was it in a vlog that we did it, or did we talk about it in a coffee and tequila episode? I think it in a vlog, a vlog, yeah, where we talked about um, wanting to cut it back on our drinking. We didn't drink throughout the month of January. We drank when we went to New York. Through the month of February, we've hardly drank, but we did go to New York again. And so we had we, we did drink there. But we didn't even go that hard in New York the second time. I no, feel like the first no. time we went for Ian's birthday, and so we got pretty pretty wasted. But the second time, we just had like brunch and... Little cocktails. We did brunch and like cocktail hours. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. I've decided like my new rules for so I used to have rules. What that are I, cheers and tea? Tell you? Let's cheers to all y'all uh, and hoping y'all are having a wonderful Sunday. Let's cheers as to well. coffee and tequila. Coffee and tequila. Oh, so I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so but trashy. I used to have rules in college that I I I do for drinking. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't drink in my barracks. Actually, that was a rule that was already there. <laughs> but I, would, I, was uh, like, I was like, I was like, I need to drink in your barracks. I wouldn't drink in, in my barracks, and I would only drink if I was out socially, and I wouldn't drink if I was alone or very sad. And so now I, those are still, so now I'm going to adjust that because we're, we're in this environment. So I will drink with you, mm-hmm. um, and then I will drink on coffee and tequila days. And then if we go out with friends, okay. I, f- I feel like that's a good, that's good a, that's good. It. I think. Yeah. <laughs> we did go back to New York though. Yeah. So we did. just couldn't stay away. So we had to go back to New York again. We actually went to New York for scream six. We did. And I've seen that like four times now. Um, yeah. For your, for we went so that you could record for your stuff. We went, well, so we went basically so I could record with my buddy Ian in person for our podcast, my bloody Judy. Um, and we just, it was so wonderful. I just love like basking in the greatness of all of my friends. And we, we invited all of our friends to go and we had like basically, I, I in my head and when I looked down at the seating chart, it looked like we had more of the whole row, but yeah. we didn't really. We <laughs> just had the like row, the center of but, the row. Yeah. Um, and so that was really nice, actually. It, it, and I just like, you know, I, I, everybody was really excited for it. We all showed up at the movie. We all like, you know, reacted and, and talked about it afterwards. We went out for drinks afterwards and just talked about the movie and talked about other things. And it was just really, really nice. The, the New York trip was a really nice trip. And it wasn't centered around like getting drunk, right? Like, I, th- I feel like our first trip back in January was centered around getting drunk. And this one was more about kind of just hanging out with friends and Scream 6. It was centered around Scream 6, yeah. but then we did have a little bit of extra time, too. Like, uh, I, I recorded with, with Troy, too, and I'm hoping I can... Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have, like, some more stuff coming up with Troy pretty soon, and so I'm really excited to share that with all of y'all, that's but... A, that's stuff that's so exciting. So that's exciting. Fun. Yeah, but so me and Troy have been recording stuff for a good bit about, like, Britney year by year, but we weren't really sure what we wanted to do with it, and so we recorded one of those episodes, Britney the Year 2000, while we were there with... Uh, 
our friend Melissa that we met the last time. And she was great. She showed up just looking carry fabulous. She did. She had like fur coat, um, like really great, like 2000s esque shades, you know, like the, the tinted lenses and, um, and it's always like the fur coat that's falling off of her shoulder. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and she, yeah, she, she's just great. She's a fabulous person, and I'm just, like, obsessed with her. Um, and she's got a podcast called Chic NYC, if you ever want to check her podcast out. I think I'm actually going to be on that coming yep. up soon. Yeah, you he, and Troy. We, we did, me and Troy recorded, I think we did, like, no, we did two episodes. I in my, in my head, we were supposed to do three, but I think we only did two. So we did Britney the Year 2000, and then we recorded for hers as well. Um, and so whenever that's coming out, I'll post that on social media. But I was really excited just getting to, like, see everybody. And we got to see Adam, and we, we went out for brunch with Adam. We were supposed to be going out to brunch with Adam and Troy. And the... Uh, Troy had like lost his key. So we were just waiting there at this, at this, uh, brunch place with Adam and we were just talking and Troy was like an hour late, then an hour and a half late, nearly two hours late. And finally he just called us and he's like, Hey, I, I promise I'm not lying. Um, <laughs> I lost my keys. So he just moved to New York city. Right. And so he was like in the process of unpacking and he'd lost his keys and his landlord was able to get him another set. But, um, so Anyway, while we were sitting at brunch, there was this like table of of like kids oh, that yeah. came in and sat next to us. It was a really cool, like a little brunch place. It was owned, by, I guess that was the owner owned by like a, like I, I a think British so. guy. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was British themed. Yeah, like and, an English breakfast. And and Adam is is British, and so he he walked in and they had like a similar accent and yeah, had a little bit of chat, a little banter, a little banter. That's so cringy. I know, Adam, I know Adam cringes every single time we do that in front of him. We are always speaking like Love Island in front of him, which is not his accent at all. <laughs> um, but so we were sitting and this, uh, like these couple of kids came in and sat next to us. And it was one of those COVID uh, tents outside of the restaurant. It's like heated and all of that where they could have homeless people. But they just, you know, <laughs> it's a restaurant. It's not for homeless people. Here's to the homeless people keeping warm during the winter. I know. It's so sad. Mm-hmm. So this this group of kids comes and sits at the table next to us, and they keep looking at us the entire time, right? And so I had my camera out, and we were filming, and we were like, we we're vlogging a little bit, and um, they just kept looking at us, and they were I could tell they were talking about us because we were close enough, but I was trying not to like give it any any sort of attention, and then finally like one of them came over and was like, "Sir, um, are you guys on YouTube?" And I was like. Ugh. Mind you, these were like 10-year-olds. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, you should not be watching my videos. Uh, please. Because your so, last video was... Well, yeah. The, sex, so, lives of, uh, the sex Lives of Gay Men. I was like, you should not be watching my channel. But I I, I just I just nodded. I smiled. I said, yes. Um, and then we kind of went back to chatting, and they went back to their table. But they kept talking about us. And and I was like, oh my gosh, please like don't I I can't talk to children about my my channel. I just can't do it. <laughs> and so one of them came back over and was like, sir, excuse me, real sweet. And and I said, yeah. And he said, um, what's your YouTube channel name? And I was like, you don't watch my channel, but I definitely cannot tell you what my channel is because again, my first video, the first video that would pop up would be the six lives of game. game. Man. <laughs> So that was even worse, and I just had to tell them, oh, oh, I can't tell you. You just have to find it. You're even getting a little red thing about it. And so they went they went back over, and they, I could, we could hear them like, was trying to find what our, our channel would have been. So he, he, he was recording a lot while we were there. Yeah. Um, so I would just walk around New York City. I'd put in my headphones. I'd listen to my audiobook. And <sighs> I felt terrible. And he kept on being like, just come and sit. No, 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 no. No. What do you mean? No? Okay. So while I would have been recording, right? Because these were pretty long recordings. And so while I was recording, Alistair would text me things like just walking around the streets of New York. Well, okay. So first of <laughs> what all, what does that sound like I, to y'all? Do y'all, I, I, does that make you think of like sad jazz music playing in an HBO 90s, like New York City show? I, I told him that I wanted to go visit <laughs> bookstores, but then I was like, hey, I'm just going to go to bookstores while you're doing this. And then you're like, no, I wanted to go to bookstores with you. And I said, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. I'll walk around the streets of New York. You know, listening to my book, and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it, and it's, I'd like pop into some stores, just like you know, like uh, mm -hmm. what is it called, v window shop? 
at like window shop and stuff like that. And I had a really good time. And then you texted me, come back up. You know, we're still recording. And you just wanted me to sit there while it's, y'all recorded. Again, it's because you were texting me things like just walking around the city of New York. And I'm like, oh, I don't want you to feel like you couldn't come in. So I was like, come back up. And he comes in and I'm like, just, you, you can stay in here. We're not making you leave the room while we're, we record. Um, oh, we've got somebody uh, at the door. Well, you know what, Zachary? Now I know how Brando feels. <laughs> that makes no sense. I don't understand. Because he sits here while we record. I guess oh, he is sitting there while we record. But like you made it sound like you were you were like sad sad boy walking around the streets of New York while it's raining and you have your hood up and just hoping somebody offers you a sandwich. No, I'm fine. I I, I just think it for some reason speaks to your guilt. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> this son of a bitch. It was a great trip. I can't wait to go back. I'd like to go back sooner than later. But you um, know where I wish we could have taken a trip to? Mm-hmm. Glendale, Arizona. A Taylor Swift air store started. Yes. <laughs> we were not there. That was that that was the date we were trying to get into also. I've actually been obsessed with everybody dressing up for the air tour. Uh, because they'll like post all their outfits and it really looks like uh, everybody decided that the Eras tour is the Met Gala for like normal people. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm obsessed with the merch uh, stand. So it's a merch bus that she has now. And so I'm obsessed with like all of the TikToks of people going and getting their merch. But I was expecting like, I was hoping that there were going to be like vinyls or something like that. I haven't seen anybody get any vinyls because I don't care too much about getting t-shirts. I probably would get one, like a sweater or something like that. But I really want like a vinyl. Bu- like I like to buy my vinyls like at different places. Like when we went to the Shania Twain residency i really wanted to buy a shania twain vinyl there because it would have the memory attached right um but they didn't have any more um but i didn't see i didn't see anybody getting vinyls at taylor swift's one so maybe they didn't maybe where they weren't selling i, it. I have a crazy idea Ooh. for a march thing i'm not sure if it'd work but what if you know she, she, she alistair's she, version appara- of march Madness. apparently she put out like a 40 song set list and it's, it was 40 it's gonna change a little songs. bit 44, 44 songs? songs this this lady is doing and and and, and i think you, you told me that it's going to change a little bit uh between like each stage of the air well, store the so the changes i've already seen of uh, um the the acoustic par- portions of it yeah. where she's just playing piano or just on a guitar those are going to change okay. um, those songs are going to swap out but i also saw you know when she dives into the water yeah and it's like the red dress well she wore a green dress last night <sighs> outfit changes Even her outfits are changing it was actually making me think because I was like, these are some pretty iconic outfits. She was changing outfits a lot. It made me think of uh, that uh, Britney, uh, what is it called? Uh, the Britney concert that you've made me watch a lot where she has an Elvis outfit. And, and oh, yeah. you told me that the outfit was stolen before. Dream Within a Dream Tour. The Dream Within a Dream. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking like, what happens if her outfits were stolen? Well, I was like, well, I guess Britney had just an outfit, a backup outfit. Mm-hmm. So Taylor Swift must have like a bunch of. Backup outfits. Taylor right? Swift's got some expensive damn outfits though. Those are like those are like Louboutins. They've got red bottoms. She's got Versace. They, they look nice. Donatella Versace even posted ta- a photo of Taylor Swift on opening night of Airs Tour, saying, "Love seeing Taylor Swift and Versace for the Airs Tour." I'm like, <laughs> I fucking love this. I love this. So, but oh, I, wait, I, I think it's some idea. Oh yeah, go for it. Okay, so Alistair's Mark Madness. My idea is you have maybe the cover of a vinyl. Um, that you're selling and you don't really sell a cover. You s- sell a pre-order at the bus and the pre-order is for a vinyl or a CD. Uh, that is the, uh, what it's like the, the concert that you're, you're going to. Does that make sense? No. So they record the audio for the concert and then they, they send it to you later as a vinyl. No, oh, you're so cute. You know, we know all the down. rights that would have to be worked around to do that. Okay, exactly. Get her team on the phone. I don't, I, I don't need you to criticize my ideas. I need you <laughs> to uplift me. Idea. It's a very cute idea, baby. I love it. I then love it's a, idea. Because then it's even more of a memory. Like You're like, this is the actual concert I went to. I will make you a vinyl. I will hold my voice note on my phone up. I'll, I'll record the audio on my phone. I'll hold it up the entire concert. Three-hour concert, by the way. Three hours and 11 minutes. I'll hold it up, and I'll, I'll tra- transform that into a vinyl for you. Well, I, I, ju- I think it's a good idea. I, we've I just, just been, like, obsessed with watching, like, TikTok videos and everything of the opening night. So we really, like, if, if you if you remember the Coffee and Tequila episode where we talked about trying to get tickets for this thing, it was, like, near impossible, right? It like, was. It, was, it was terrible. I was there, like, all three days that they had it. Um, and I was online for, like, hours trying to get these damn tickets. And then tickets were just being resold on the uh, secondary market or whatever um, for outrageous amounts and so we kind of gave up on it and I, I asked you well you pick a date and we will go to that date and I bet you tickets will be cheaper 
around then, right? And I bet we can yeah. snap up some tickets. And they probably won't be the best, but we'll snap something up. And you kind of gave up on it. You said, well, I don't really like live shows, so I guess we don't need to go. You said that. You absolutely no, said that. No, 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 no. I did I not say looking. that at all. Yes. It's just uh, with work and everything, because work is ramping up very quickly right now. Mm. It's And I'm gone a lot. So I'm going to be gone like two weeks out of every month. So half a month. Uh, I'll be gone for at least the next couple months. And with all that and trying to coordinate everything, it just feels feels really stressful to try to, like, mm -hmm. carve out that time, you know? Yeah. We even, like, looked up tickets really quick. We're like, well, what about Glendale Night too? We, that would be, like, Saturday night. We were like, how much we playing tickets? There. Could we fl just fly from El Paso to Glendale real quick? Because Arizona's right there. It wouldn't yeah. be that, that far. Um, and you, you said no. I said no. It was stressful. Yeah. I was looking. At this was going to be his birthday present, by the way. So this was yeah. supposed to be his birthday present, thirtieth birthday present. But I guess since you're not wanting that, we've kind of decided that because I'll be thirty when he gets back from yes. deployment, and then we'll both be thirty. And we can, <laughs> we're saying that's going to be his thirtieth birthday again. And so we're we're thinking maybe we'll go we'll go to like Paris or something for, yeah. for our thirtieth. We'll go to Europe for yeah. For we'll do 30s. a joint thirtieth, and we'll just do that. So you get yeah. to be you know twenty nine for another year. Yep, I'm 29. Well, that's a young and fresh <laughs> spring, spring chicken. Um, yeah, but it, I, we had we had like major FOMO watching these all of these videos. But it's so funny watching these TikTok videos because you'll get. Um, we were we were just making fun of how like some of the intros to the songs and stuff like that, and like making up our own. We're like, oh, we were. You know, my favorite color's never been purple. It's red. And then all the fans cheer because like she starts playing red or what else? What else did we say? I, I I said sometimes when I eat a sandwich I get crumbs on my shirt but I just shake it off. Ah! <laughs> and then all the fans go crazy. That's <laughs> another what we said. You know, you know when you have that guy you've been on and off with all this time, and you're just you just get to that feeling where you're just like we are never getting back together. Ah! <laughs> Hold on, we gotta do one more. What, what, what was another one? Come up with a good one. Um, oh my gosh! Now, now blanking now I'm on to all think the songs. All them, right? Yeah. Um, okay. 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 Um, oh my gosh! Why is everything? I don't, I'm 32 now, but you know, 10 years ago I was 22. Ah! Or, or how about? It's getting a little chilly, guys. How about I put on my cardigan? Ah! <laughs> it's amazing we love we, we love we love concerts starting like this but like everybody so like everybody in these tiktok videos like went ape shit for everything right and they were all like any sort of cuss word that came up any sort of anything they, they would like shout it. it at the top of their lungs so it's like she's doing all too well 10 minute version and when it comes to fuck the patriarchy they're like fuck patriarchy <laughs> <laughs> and it's just the curse everybody word. was like so excited to say the curse words they're like we're cursing at a taylor swift concert there's like a bunch of 13 year olds who, who who are finally like adults now like taylor swift and they're all like saying cuss words at the same time i don't know it's real did, did you see the proposal that happened at the taylor mm -hmm. swift concert I didn't see that. there was a proposal during one of the songs and people were like going crazy they're like oh my gosh he brought you to Taylor Swift and he proposed and money like, yeah. he got money lock it down I gotta lock it down <laughs> he got you a plane ticket Taylor Swift tickets and a ring <laughs> jeez um, I've been seeing people wear uh, the Beyonce cowboy hats to the Taylor Swift concert though and I feel a little gatekeepy about it I'm they're, like they're probably gonna be wearing them to both but but you know it does make sense to wear it to hers because some of her, her songs are country one and two, mirror ball. So you wouldn't want to go to any of them. I, I, I need to. I feel a little. I feel FOMO. I really would love to go see this show. It, it seems like it's a great time. I'll, I'll, even the people in the nosebleeds seem like they are having a phenomenal time. I want to go. I just don't want the stress of planning it. Okay, well, you know, fair enough. I know. I don't know. I really do want to go. It's just like I feel. I don't know. I don't stress. Oh, damn. Uh, it's a Taylor Swift I'm concert. stressing out right Calm now. You're just asking Well, me we this. have to talk about Helix. You may need to go take a nap on your Helix Sleep mattress because this episode is kindly being sponsored by Helix. And uh, we will let you know a little bit more about them a little bit now. And when you get really stressed out, it's always fun to just go and flop onto your, onto your uh, Helix mattress. We have two Helix mattresses, a queen size and a king size of the Midnight Lux mattress. We absolutely love them. When I do notice whenever we go away, I'm like so ready to come back and just like flop on the bed. 
Exactly. Yes. And these mattresses are, are like perfect for it. And so when we came back from New York this last time, we got in like we got in real early, like ten AM, eleven AM and we we came we ate, we, we picked up some food on the way home and then we uh ate and then we just we just like passed out passed out on the bed. And we passed out until like the like evening. Four o'clock, five yeah, o'clock. it was it was a while. Yeah. It was a while. But we love our Helix Sleep mattresses so much. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your unique needs. Everybody's different, right? Well, Helix has this sleep quiz that'll match you with the perfect mattress. And it was perfect for us because we could take the quiz as a couple. You know, Alistair is more of a side sleeper. I'm an all-over sleeper. Alistair likes a firm mattress. I like my mattress medium. We took the quiz and we were matched with the Midnight Mattress. Now, one great part to all this is that Helix will ship your mattress right to your door for free in the US. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up and we've done it twice. And if it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried, well, Helix has a 100 night sleep trial so you get more than three months to make sure that you absolutely love it. Well, if you're somebody you know is in the market for a new mattress and you think that Helix sounds right for you, you can go to helixsleep.com slash tequila where you can get 20% percent off of your mattress and two free pillows two free dream pillows dream pillows dream pillows dream within a dream pillows Ooh, oh what a marketing genius <laughs> bye bye recharge my glass thank you sir really appreciate it i got a buffalo nickel for you oh you want a little bit of tit <laughs> yes, okay. I do. I do want a little bit of tech. Um We did, so we did like a Q&A question and had people like submit Q&A questions. And so um, a lot of them, we got a good bit, but a lot of them were focused around like coming out stories, which I was real surprised about. Because um, I guess I sometimes forget that like, some of the listeners and some of the viewers here on Coffee and Tequila haven't don't follow any of the vlogs that long. Yeah, either they they have just checked and started checking you into the vlogs, or they like haven't followed the vlogs at all. They don't really care about the vlogs, right? And they just like Coffee and Tequila. But I always forget that there's like a significant amount of those, and so we got a lot of questions about our coming out stories, right? Um, and so I I did like I wanted to keep it a little bit themed here, so I kind of plucked the questions that had to do with coming out, had to do with um, the you know, sort of our sexuality and coming to, to terms with our sexuality. And then I might save the, some other, some of the other questions that we got for another, uh, another brunch episode. So, uh, yeah, we want to go through some of these, uh, Q and I questions. Let's what are you do searching? It. What do you do? I'm trying to remember the title of my coming out. Video Army on husband channel. comes out. Um, and uh, what did I call that? I don't know. Type ABZB next to it. Oh, I should have done That's that. That's probably that. Alistair has a coming out story. We we both have coming out stories I, on there. I have channels. it on his channel. I have it on your channel. Yes. Um, I wonder if it's like blocked or something. I don't think it's blocked. You didn't talk about nothing bad. No, I didn't talk about anything bad. Um, I um, I did my. Oh, there Alistair's coming out story. Alistair's coming out story. I guess that's pretty straightforward. <laughs> um, I uh, I I did my coming out story back in 2016. I remember I. I'd like wanted to do a YouTube channel and I thought it was going to be like really fun. And I, I, one night I was staying up, um, I t like took Adderall and, or Vyvanse and, and stayed up with my friends and we were all supposed to be studying and stuff like that. And instead I was like writing down all the YouTube videos I wanted to do. And then I hit like 6am and I'm like, gotta go. And I went home and I had this camera that like a film professor had given me like way back when I was in film, when I started film school in freshman year. So I pulled that out, charged it. I sat there and charged it while I was like <laughs> kind of tweaking on Vyvanse for a little bit. And, uh, I set, I set up, I threw, threw all my mess underneath my bed. Um, and, uh, I, I filmed a coming out video and this was at the time where coming out videos were, they're, they were they, still, they were still pretty popular on YouTube, yeah. but this was like the tail end of a coming out video, right? The popularity of coming out video. So I feel like if I had done a coming out video, like the next year or maybe even 2018, 2017, 2018, I don't think it would have hit like it did. No. Um, and so. It was, uh, they did that, that thing changed my life, you know, it did. It I mean, I, we wouldn't be together exactly if you didn't come out on YouTube. So exactly. thank grass for that. YouTube's coming out videos. I remember I used to watch a bunch of those. Um, when I first started coming out to myself, mm. um, I'd, I, I don't remember all of the guys, but I know there was one, there was like an air force guy who came <sighs> out. Was it? Well, I think so he was deployed. So there was, um, oh, are you surprised? That's Randy. I did an interview with him. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. I did. He was the guy who would cut his um, head off in his videos. And he said Not that when, when, <laughs> when, <laughs> um, when he 
uh, he said that the day that Don't Ask, Don't Tell was repealed, that he would call his dad and reveal face, and he would call his dad and come out on camera, and he did. And that, like, was a firestorm. I was, like, so obsessed with that video. That was such, like, it was the YouTubers like that. They were real big inspirations for me, you know, um, people who, who were sharing coming out stories and, and um, like Mark Miller was a big one for mm -hmm. me. There was a guy named, I don't remember if he did. Huh. What? I don't remember if he did a coming out story. Russ who, the Marine. Do you, do you remember who he was? No, I, I'll, I'll probably remember mm -hmm. these people more visually than. Uh, so there was a guy named man. Russ the Marine and I, I liked his videos a lot too. And he would talk about sort of topics like that. Um, and then there was, who else? We had V squared was a big one. They mm -hmm. were like a married. Do you remember them? I do. They remember were a married that. couple. Um, and I, I still talk to Vinny sometimes. I actually talked to Vinny right before we went to New York. We weren't able to meet up, but um, I need to answer him. On, on Instagram. Um, but yeah, there was just a bunch of like YouTubers that I was just super into. And I loved watching coming out stories and I loved, um, Matt and blue had, they would like post, it was right when they got crow and they would do videos just like family vlogs. And I was obsessed with those. It's kind of interesting to think about now, especially with, uh, I mean, we still had an Instagram back then, but it was more like photos and stuff. Yeah. And, and YouTube was really the video source. And, you know, people weren't making, at, at least there, there, there wasn't much LGBTQ plus representation in films and movies. There were some, but not much. It was but, more content that you had to project onto because yes. they weren't overtly saying it. But you'd go to YouTube and you could find yes. actual queer people making queer content. Yes. And and that was, I, I, I think that changed the dynamic a lot. Well, it was my favorite part of YouTube is that um, I've always said that if, if anybody's ever asked me, oh, should I do a YouTube channel? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Because the, the important part is having s as many stories out there as possible so that y there's going to be somebody who relates to you more than somebody else, right? The more stories that are out there, the more shades of coming out stories of life experiences, other types of, you know, stories, um, trauma stories, all of that, that there's just more shades and there's more for people to like specifically relate to. Right. And so it's always great to put out your story, but, um, yeah, I guess people, some, there's some people who are like, we, we, we get, we're starting, um, in the last like couple of years, we've started getting, uh, <laughs> younger people. I, I, I used to watch you when I, I was, watch you when I was uh, in middle uh, school or when, when I was, when, when I was a teenager, <laughs> when I was in high school, I was like, like, thank you. We're almost 30. <laughs> We're almost 30. You're 28, babe. He is 28. And you're 32. No, I'm not. I'm 30. Well, so there's people here, yeah, again, roundabouts way of talking, um, that you don't know are coming out stories because they, you know, didn't follow us on YouTube. And so I guess we'll start there. Um, <laughs> well, well, I guess that's, I, I probably should have thought it through because I guess as a, as a, a, a queer person, gay person, gay guys, we don't ever really stop coming out. No, uh, we don't. And I, th I think that's, something I want to talk about. Yeah. Um, cause I think, so Mike, are, are, do we want to talk about that first and, and then the coming out? Yeah, we'll talk about that first. I guess. Yeah. Just so briefly. for, for me, I think especially as a, as, as a cis gay man, um, in a, a very heteronormative, uh, like profession being the army. Well, cis and also cis just meaning, it, I know some people get real butthurt over this term. It's not an attack. It literally just means as, as somebody who identifies as the gender that you are. Yeah, yeah. Who, who identifies as the gender I am and, and project the, what is it, norms or... Don't get, just don't get, don't get, please don't get hung up on terms and stuff like that. <laughs> um, it, 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 but, but, I don't want to have to deal with that in the comments. But tonight. anyways, I don't always project as gay. Um, so when at work, I often have to come out a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just have to say my husband or if someone says, Hey, does your wife do this? That's or, absolutely the easiest way. Yeah. To. And I said, and I, I won't even correct them. I'll say, uh, I'll restate their question and be like, no, but my husband does this. And I'll, then they'll, they'll get the, the point when I say yeah. that. And usually they're like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have assumed. And really we're in a, in a time where it's easier, not it, it's easier to not assume. So I always say, when I'm when I talk to people, I say spouse or significant other. Do you have a spouse or significant other? Mm -hmm. And then they can apply a term to that. They can say yeah. partner. They can say wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, um, whatever they want. But it is true that like when because I always, I still get a little tense sometimes when people like bring up wife or ask me about my wife or ask me about 
I don't know, girlfriend or something like that. Um, I still tense up a little bit, but it is, it is the easiest way to come out to just say my husband because yeah. then they get it and they usually don't. Ask, they don't usually say anything. Like we met After the neighbor that. lady the other day, and um, uh, I, I asked her what her name was, and she said blah blah blah, and she asked me what my name was, and I said, and this is my husband Alistair, and it was easy way to kind of like just let them know, right? And there were no questions. Nobody really had anything to say about it, and it's just it's easier that way, right? Yeah, I used to stress a lot, I think, uh, when I first uh, commissioned, when people would bring that up. And I think a couple times, and I'm not proud of it, a couple times I just go with it. Because I was like, I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm only seeing this yeah. person once, and I don't want to... I just don't want to have to come out again. It's it's well, exhausting it's, feeling like yeah. you have to come out again and again and again. And you do um, tense up a little bit because sometimes you don't know where people are with certain things, right? Like we're in a hot, hot, hot time politically where queer people are kind of just in general seen as aggressors and groomers and all of that. And yeah. so there, there's uh, – and that's just the fact of it. That's just the fact of it. And so it does tense you up sometimes when you're – talking to somebody you you just from out, outside perception they they look a little uh, more conservative or they act a little bit more conservative or they speak a little bit more conservative and it's it's it does make you tense up a little bit to you know if you're in the situation where you do have to say my husband or something like that right um so i get it but it's as far as being in the military we haven't really we haven't had any problems i don't think we have had more problems with just like outsiders and civilians and um no, and I've actually talked to, uh, because a lot of people I work with ask me about this. Hey, have you had any issues um, in the Army um, with uh, being a gay man? And there, there's really been no issues that I have personally seen. You know, I mean, there might have been stuff behind doors or something that I haven't seen. But I also make sure that when they ask me those questions, they don't think of it as just a, a me thing. Because mm-hmm. the way uh, me and my husband are in the military and you know the units that we're in and all that stuff is is very different than how somebody else might be uh b- because i'm i'm a, a a white gay man who doesn't automatically look like a gay man and so therefore i think that i might be treated differently than people who aren't cis hetero uh, uh who aren't cis you know outwardly um and they might be or or, or you know maybe so cis, I think we, oh, like, oh, yeah. sorry, uh, <laughs> people who aren't white or yes. cis, and they might be treated differently than well, I am treated. That's just the fact of the matter, Rod, is like if you're not uh, assimilate, and this goes for all types of people in society, is like if you don't assimilate to what the majority of society does, um, you are othered. And that doesn't just go for queer people. It doesn't just go for gay people or, you know, all these other terms, right? I, I get I get so bogged down on all the terms. I have to be real about that. Um, but that goes for anybody who, who just doesn't assimilate that way, right? And so... Um, well, yeah, because <laughs> my experience is my own. And yes. I, I don't want people thinking that because I haven't experienced prejudice or I don't think I've experienced prejudice in, in the army, meaning that other gay people, other queer people uh, don't also experience prejudice. Yeah, th- th- that's what I want to put out there, because, you know, my experience is my own. And it's not anybody else's. Well, and I think if we have it behind our back, which is how I'd like to be a normal person, talk I, about me. I prefer my back. when people talk about me. Exactly. My back. Get it all out. Yeah, Get don't, it all out. Don't tell me mean stuff. We've in had front moments of me. like in public though, where people have like called us out. Do you remember when we were on the um, like what was it called, merry go round? That was merry go round, right? Uh, the, the horses the, that go up and down and stuff. Oh it yeah, was at Oktoberfest, and some oh lady gosh. like yelled at us while we were on there and just go when we weren't doing anything either. Uh, we were just there, and we were on the horses, and we leaned over and we like picked. We yeah. don't like make out and bow or anything. Yeah, like it wasn't that. make out. We just like picked and a very broy kiss. And uh, 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 it was very bro. <laughs> That's what he does in public. Uh, <laughs> he, like yeah, a lady like yelled at us and told us um, not to do that. And there's that wasn't children here for children, and there's yeah. So like we've we've experienced our fair share of prejudice, and that happens a good bit. Um, but but also so, like many queer people were very cautious in most environments. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, I guess that brings us just to coming out stories, though, I think. Um, as far as coming out, like, you're always, as a queer person, probably always going to have to come out, right? We're just, I don't I don't see us, at least not for a very, very long time, arriving to a place where people just don't assume, because I think that's just the natural thing to do right mm-hmm. now. Um, it, it's so baked into our society to kind of assume and, like, judge off covers and all that. Um, 
and that's just how it is. It doesn't mean somebody's being malicious by by doing that. It just that's just kind of how it is. And so we've had many coming out stories. I guess um, the first time maybe I came out was. I guess to the guy I hooked up with the first time in high school, right? That would be the first time. I guess so. I guess that would count as the first time. That yeah. was I was about 17 years old, but then that summer I came out officially. My first like real coming out was to my mom. And so I um I remember like when oh, I was watching something on TV. I had this like dresser and like box TV that stood on top of the dresser and I'd watch it and I'd put on MTV or like E in the mornings, but when I was getting ready for school and all that. Um, and I remember there was an Adam Lambert, like a true Hollywood story or something, some little documentary or interview or something that was playing. And he like talked about being gay and coming out and accept and like coming to terms with that. Yeah. And I remember sitting on my bed and like, that was the first time. And it, it just, I wasn't even really taking it in, but that was the first time it really slapped me in the face. You're gay. <laughs> And like it like sent me into a kind of like a, a depressive state for like two weeks, even though I'd been hooking up with a guy. But I told myself, I told myself, you know, it's well, you still, have to come out to yourself. That's exactly. the thing is that you really have to come out. To well, yourself. so and I was telling myself um, all the way up until then that I still wanted to marry a woman. I still wanted to have a wife and have kids, and like I had a very specific view of how I wanted my 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 life to look right. And so that didn't that means I wasn't gay. Because I wanted to marry a woman. I couldn't be gay if I wanted to marry a woman. Um, and that was the first time it really, like, hit me. And I just sat down. And I'm like, wow, I'm gay. And, like, real depressed for, like, two weeks. And finally, um, going into that summer, I, I was I wanted to go into college. I was going to be leaving for college and going to the University of Alabama. And I told myself when I got to Alabama, I wouldn't know anybody. I knew a couple people. and I, But other than them, I could start fresh. And so I wanted to just go and not have to come out to anybody. I was like, I don't, I'm not going to have to come out to anybody. I'll just already be out. I'll get to, you know, I'll start dating guys, hooking up with guys, all that. Um, and so I wanted to tell my mom first. And so I told my mom, um, or I, I wrote her, she was going to be picking me up for a, for a doctor's appointment um, later that day. And so she went to work and I was home still and I wrote her a letter um, and I put it in her car because I knew she'd be going to work. And so she went to work and when she came back, I got in the car and we sat for a long time in silence. Um, and I just like didn't know she hadn't found it because it was like in the, in the center console. And uh, I said, or I didn't say anything. We just kind of sat. And then like maybe like halfway to the doctor or something like that, she finally said something. She said, so I read your note. She was real calm about it, um, which was different from the first time. Because <laughs> when I was about 15, 14, 15, she found porn on my computer. She went on snooping <laughs> on my computer. And I came home and I thought somebody died because she was like in tears. She was just bawling. Um, and she wouldn't talk to me. And then finally I was in my room and later that evening she came in and she asked me if I was gay. And I was like, no, 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 no. Um, my friend, uh, uh, and I made up something. I was like, my friend Lauren wanted me to search gay porn and, and send it to her. So I said, like, he was emailing it to her. That's the only reason I was searching. Um, so I think she'd had a couple of years to kind of, <laughs> that excuse, I don't know where the, <laughs> what the fuck I was doing with that excuse. I could have come up with something different. I clicked it accidentally or something. Yeah. Um, but so I think she'd had a couple of years to kind of come to terms with it. And so she was real calm about it. The only real things that she had to say was, um, I just don't want you to be any different. Um, I'm worried that you'll, uh, you'll change or something like that. And then she said, and I'm, I'm, I'm scared that, uh, I don't want you to get anything. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, this is, you know, she didn't have experience with gay people and, and all of that. And yeah. so I, I had to explain to her, yeah, straight people can get things too, right? You just yeah. have to be safe. Like my sexual activity has nothing to do with my sort of sexuality, right? Like I'm coming out to you and telling you I'm gay right now. I'm not telling you I'm about to go and <laughs> have an orgy. I'm not going to a glory hole right after this doctor's appointment, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so she it was real easy with her it felt easy i felt like a huge load off and like we really didn't talk about it again you know she didn't ask about boyfriend she didn't ask about anything I, I, that's kind of how i preferred it right and so i went off to college and i remember there was a there was like a couple moments um, that kind of all blend together for me but that i was like meeting roommates and you know uh talking about myself with them and telling them about my life and stuff like that that's just what roommates do you know you introduce yourselves and stuff like that and they would bring up girls and they would ask me if i had a girlfriend and stuff like that and i just remember it was moments like that where i really wanted to come out i really wanted to say i even thought about saying well i have a boyfriend just to say like i have a boyfriend right like we were talking about with husbands yeah. it's easier to just say it like that 
If you're single, if you never had a boyfriend before and you're scared to come out, just say you have a boyfriend. And that's easier than, it might even be who easier than- Who lives in Canada. That, who lives in Canada. You never met him. Um, might be easier than saying I'm gay, you know. Um, it gets the point across. But um, I just was chickened out. I was too chicken shit. And so the moments that I could have come out to my roommates or I could have come out to people we were going out with and stuff like that, and just said something simply as like, I, I have a boyfriend or that guy's hot or something like that. I don't know. Too chicken to do any of that. And so I went right back into the closet. Um, and it was very secretive about it. You know, grinder, all the, all the, all the good stuff. Um, and just didn't come out for a couple of years. Right. Uh, and then I, I, I'd met a guy. And I'd started dating him and I dated him for like three years, right? Like on and off three years, kind of going into four. It was just like a clusterfuck of that. He was my very first love. And I have a whole story about that as well. Um, and I remember I'd, I'd, I'd been drunk one night cause I was drunk like every night. And so I was drunk one night. It was like my junior year and I was texting him and we were like in an argument or something like that. Right. And there was, I had a, a group of friends and there was one guy in there that I thought we were pretty cool. And he had gotten copies of, like, I guess I'd left my phone open and I'd gone to the bathroom or something like that. And he'd gotten copies of those messages. And so he sent those messages to the rest of the group. That's why I loved Love, Simon. Cause it felt like, do you remember when Love, Simon came out? And I was like, that's, do you remember he took pictures? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's my fucking story right there. Um, so he like spread the messages around and sent them to people, and like people kind of just stopped talking to me, which is so weird to me now thinking about that. Like, just kind of distancing yourself from somebody because were they, the they were dream? they were sort of outed. No, they were they were an argument between us, but it was clear from those messages that we were like a thing, right? Yeah. We were arguing about relationship stuff, and so. Um, but it's so weird to me thinking now that, that anybody would stop talking to you because they realized you were gay, you know, but like uh, that whole group, like pretty much stopped talking to me. I had one friend named John who, who talked to me still. Um, but the rest of them pretty much stopped talking to me because they're scared of being gay by association. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what it was, but those are the, that's the group of friends. I call them group A and group B. And so group A I'd hung out with literally since the beginning of freshman year, right? Those were my first friends that I met. They were like, those were the, that was, I went to New Orleans with them. We would hang out. We'd kill like ATV and they were a bunch of rich people from like Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they just like all dropped me except for John. Um, and then I met group B around that same time. So I luckily still had a group of friends. Like I'd met group B during that same time that I was like, I, I, I had this like push and pull in me, right? Like where I was too scared to come out to this group of friends, but I really wanted to just be out. I wanted to like tell people about my boyfriend troubles and stuff like that. And so I'd started meeting people um, who I called group B uh, in like the courtyard of my apartment complex. Cause we'd all take our dogs out there and let our dogs play together. And we got drunk one night. And I remember telling people in group B, uh, we all got drunk one night and, and, and we were playing true American we like set up the tables and all the chairs and we'd played true American. That was the first time I'd ever really hung out with anybody and drank with anybody up till then. We just like met each other in the, in the courtyard. Um, and so I'm talking a lot. He'll get to it in a second. I'm so sorry. Um, but he, or so I remember that night I was real drunk, but not blackout cause I can still remember it. Um, and I remember there was this girl who was trying to hook up with me and she was like sitting in my lap and like, you know, move around very clearly trying to hook up with me. I could hear her talking to other people. Like I was very like honed in at that moment because I knew what was happening and she was talking to the people next to her. Um, and she was like, he's just not into it. I, I can tell he's not into it. I'm guessing meaning I wasn't hard. <laughs> <laughs> and so finally I kind of like piped up because some of the group had gone. It was kind of the people I, I, I really liked and I felt like I could trust. And so I just kind of leaned over to her and I said it loud enough because everybody was kind of paying attention. And I said, um, it's not you. I promise. Like you're great. You're real hot, but I have a boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> and she just started laughing and I love her. She's like one of my good friends. And I said, I still, I haven't talked to her in a long time, but she is one of my good friends. And I she started laughing and she's like, I am so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and it just kind of like settled in and everybody was fine with it. And people started to ask me about my boyfriend and, you know, such a different experience from Group A. Did it feel like a relief, like oh, something off yes. your shoulders? Yes, yes. Yeah. So then, when I got drunk and went to have fights with my boyfriend, I had people to 
to, 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 <laughs> to bitch about. talk to you? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, do, who, who do you talk to you when we fight? I have friends. You, you talk to people <laughs> about our fights? Are we not allowed? I've never. It depends on what the fights are. Well, they're like, they're, well, now that I know we can. They're like silly fights. Maybe that's a conversation we need to have. Um, those were my big coming out stories, though. I think other than that, I guess coming out to the rest of my family, because we're kind of wind, wind, winding up here on, on time for my segment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, coming out to the rest of my family like again I hadn't, didn't really talk to my mom about it or anything like that but when I started YouTube and it started picking up I remember there was a moment where some of my videos started like jumping and I was like I don't want anybody to see this I don't want anybody to to, to just to find stumble out. upon it so I told my mom about it I'm like hey I have a YouTube channel and it's really popping off and so she went to people and started telling them she told my dad and she told like my sister and like, or they, they, I don't think she told my sister. I think my sister like overheard or something like that. My sister, I found out, had found like years before my coming out letter to my mom. She'd found that out? She did. And she never said anything, but like, oh, it must her. have been a long, long time ago. Cause she, I think I, I'll have to ask her about that. And I wish I had that letter still. Um, but then my brother like had, gosh, this was so long ago. I can hardly remember it, but I think my brother had, and we were, were we dating at this time? Do you remember me telling you any, anything about yes, this? Yes, we were dating okay. at this time. Well, my brother had like seen that my Instagram was like climbing. And so he was like looking at comments and seeing, and he was like, does he have a workout page? Does he have, <laughs> so he was looking at comments and people were talking about my channel. And so he went and like searched my channel and I guess found it. He's a gay? Yeah. <laughs> no, but if you, yeah, your, your family was super supportive. They were, and like so. I think my mom, I, I I I thank my mom so much because I just needed her to, I needed her to come out for me for everybody else. My grandpa, yeah. I love them. They embraced you so lovingly, and 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 nobody has really treated me all that bad. And my aunt Sarah was actually the one person in my family who who handled it not handled it the best but showed me the most love i need to actually i should text her after this and say thank you for that um but she i remember called me right after she found out and she called me and she gave me this she talked to me for like two hours and she was like you nothing has changed you've always been my little zachary and you are my favorite and and all this and i guess that's my time <laughs> <laughs> but i guess those were my big coming outs and then everything else after this is just like Meeting new people, having to say I have a husband, stuff like that. All right, Alistair, what is your, what was your coming out story? Where would you like to start? How are you going to finish? So I think I'm going to start with an embarrassing story that I don't think I've ever told before. But at this point, I think it's have like... Have you told me? Yes, I've told okay. you. Uh, but at, at this point, I think it's kind of like a, a f- interesting thing to look back at. So uh, when I was a kid, like most people who grew up in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, my family had a family computer. Oh, the family computer. It was a family computer. It was like a, in a, like a nook in the house. And I went on it. And I remember one day I just, you know, you click through stuff. And I started seeing like nude pictures of, I think it was women actually at first. And then I was seeing nude pictures of men with the women. And then I was seeing nude pictures of men with men. And I remember I was like, I was like, I don't know how I feel about this, but I like it. So I want to keep it. And I. I started printing it out, but it wasn't printing. So I, I pressed print like 50 times. It stopped. And I was like, I, I was like, whatever. I took it down. And then uh, apparently it started up later. And there's like 50 pictures of a man giving fellatio to another man. And I, I, I remember my parent. My, who is who? Who did it print for? Who was, do you know who was sitting there while it started printing? Was like your dad I, on the computer and it just. One of my parents, I, uh, I, I don't know. Just like 50 times. Um, but <laughs> they, they asked me about it and I was like, no, I don't, I have no clue about that. So I think that was kind of like a, a soft, like my parents, maybe. Alistair soft launch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like, like they're, now they have to like think about it. Hey, okay. if my son is gay or right, how are we going to accept it and stuff like that. And I, I like that for parents where they like maybe have like a, an early on t- kind of realization so that they can like get men- mentally prepared for it. But I was not mentally prepared for it because I, I definitely think that you need to come out to yourself first before you come out. I remember I did. I was hooking up with somebody in high school 
And I'd call him gay. And I was like, I'm not gay. I was like, you're gay and it's fine. Uh, that's so okay you for said you, that but it's you? not. What a dick. But it's not me. What an asshole. <laughs> uh, but then in uh, in college, I think it was my sophomore year, I, I finally decided that I was gay. And I started going to New York and and exploring that side of myself. And I remember I looked up the, because I was, I'd, I've never been part of the gay, gay community before that. Um, I, obviously, I was part of it, but I wasn't part of it. And I was like very nervous. So I literally looked up the straightest gay bar in New York and I went there for my other soft launch into the gay community. <laughs> um, and I started really exploring that side of myself. And uh, me and my friends um, in college, you know, we'd often talk about like, you know, going on dates with people or like hooking up and stories like that, like hook, hook up stories that like a lot of guys usually talk to each other about. And I talked to them about it. But I'd always change the pronoun. Oh, yeah, sneaky, sneaky. So I, we I, all I did that. I'd always change the pronoun, and I really didn't want to like change the dynamic of my relationship with my friends. And I remember finally being like, "I'm just gonna go ahead and do it." And I first came out to Arden, our friend, our very close friend. I came out to her, and uh, she was very happy for me. And then I came out to my roommates. Uh, I took them out both for a drink. And then uh, I was like, hey, just so you know, um, the people I was hooking up with, they weren't he, I was she's, they were he's. Oh, so you had big, big sort of things. What, I wasn't dating you when you did that. No, or, okay. no, no. Uh, we didn't date until li- like my late, my junior year. Mm. Excuse me. And then, um, so I, I, I did that with my close friends and roommates at West Point, but that was it. Uh, and I, I was still going out. And I remember I saw... Uh, what I really didn't want to change was obviously my da- dynamic with people and, uh, the fact that we, we had communal showers, mm-hmm. you know, in college. So it was all like, it's just one big shower. And I didn't want people thinking that I was like looking at them inappropriately or anything like that. Um, because you, we'd hold full conversations just in the shower and, um, I, I wasn't sexualizing that at all. And I, I didn't want people thinking that I was being inappropriate, but, um, I remember one time after I, I, I got home, I home to the barracks, and I was looking at Reddit, and somebody had posted one of your videos. And I clicked on the videos, and I decided, oh my gosh, this is the man for me. And I wanted to see if he had an Instagram. And I don't know, I, I guess I was really like full of myself thinking that it was going to work. But I messaged you on Instagram, and you actually messaged me back. And we messaged back and forth for a bit. And... I was like, this is because before then I'd gone on dates with guys, but I'd never had a real boyfriend or anything. So you're actually my, like my real relationship. That always my gives real me pause first sometimes. relationship. That always does give me pause. And I'm, sometimes I'm like, hmm, I wonder if we would have, if you would have thought I was the one for you had you been able to have proper, a proper dating experience with other guys before me. Yeah, I, 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 I think so. Mm. I just, I, I don't. I don't feel like I missed out on anything. Like I, I hooked up a lot, so I got that out of my system. There you go. But um, I, I, I really didn't even care about having a relationship until you. And then I was like, yeah, he's the one for me. And I reached out, uh, you reached back, and then I flew in t- t- to see you, and then we decided that we were together. And, and then it- he soft launched on me. and <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and then, uh, so I, after we decided that we were together, um, I invited him to come to ring weekend. Um, and my family was coming too. And he said, Hey, I'm not, uh, I'm not going if you know, uh, your family isn't going to know who I am to you. I, I well, cause I'd asked you a couple of times yeah. leading up to that. Hey, does your family know? Cause I'm coming to this ring weekend and ring weekend is like, it's in August, right? Um, it's yeah. like a, it's like a weekend in August where all the families come up and, and the seniors at West Point, um, get their class rings. It's like a big ceremony. What's the cows? Wait, is it the cows? It what was your last seniors? year. I don't know. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, seniors. and so I was like, well, and I'd had my plane ticket booked. It was like my first like big YouTube money. So I was like buying plane tickets and I thought it was so cool. And, um, I was like, well, you got to make sure you tell people, right? Because I don't want to see like your dad and your grandpa and your mom and all these, these people. I'd met your mom already. So you'd come out to your mom already that summer. Oh yeah. Okay, so, so back. got to back up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, the way I came out to m- my mom and then my family, 
is I really didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want it to be this whole big thing. I didn't want to answer a bunch of questions. So I wrote an email to my mom. I wrote out every single question that I could think of that she would ask, you know, even ones that just seem out of water. You're like, hey, does this mean that you want to change your gender or does this mean uh, that you're going to get married to a man? Does this mean that you're uh, not being safe when you're having sex? Uh, All of those questions that I could think of so that I could go ahead and pre-answer them so we don't have to have an awkward conversation. Yeah, and it it speaks so so highly to your... Um, emotionally disconnected family. <laughs> 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 I wish I had uh, done, done the same thing, but I did. I, I sent it, and then and then she asked me if she could share it with my dad and my uh, family, and I said, "Yeah, you can share it." And and, and that was it. And the, he met the re- Zach met the rest of my family. Uh, well, not the rest of my family, but the, most of my family. I think Ring Weekend. Yeah. And uh, when I went out with you Ring Weekend, and I took you out as a date. Um, maybe people had already known by then, but I hadn't been very public about it. But, uh, that was the first time I was like in public, taking you out on a date, having a man on my arm and, and having you sit next to me and stuff. It's so Um, wild too. Yeah. I just remember Arden like staring at me the entire (laughs) time we were sitting at dinner. This might've been like hundredth night too. I get those two confused, those two weekends. Yeah. It's just whatever one I, no, I guess not because, because. Or was it your graduation? I don't know. Your mom was sitting next to me. So I don't know if Arden was staring at me to kind of like scout me up and down because I was dating her, one of her good friends, or is because your mom was like stealing all of the silverware and I was, hold- <laughs> I was holding the purse for her and your mom was like swiping it into her purse. <laughs> well, my mom's kleptomania side. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, that's how you came out. To, um, that, that's how it came out. And then you did that to your grandpa too. I did that to my grandpa too. I just sent him an email and he said, Hey, I'm just looking, looking forward to seeing you at graduation. And he was fine. I think that he was very, uh, not hesitant. I think that he just didn't want to think about it. Uh, but he got to know you a bit. And I think that as he got to know you, um, he really settled into the idea of me being gay. I guess so. Um, what about everybody else though? in your, in your family, like, Ian, Brian, um, I didn't all really, your aunts and cousins, like how I didn't really have to come out to them because I was already posting stuff about you and I, you and I. So like, you let them find out from posting. You didn't like have somebody like buffer it and and tell people. No, mm. no. I mean, I, I I don't have to like do a whole coming out thing to every single person in my life. That's exhausting. Yeah, like that's I guess. exhausting. Yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. And mm. like, I think yeah. I mean, that's that's how I came out. Oh, you're coming out stories. My favorite is the Jamie story, though. You telling Jamie, and then so you told me. Yeah, do you want? To, oh, yeah. So you told her twice. Yeah. So I told her. I thought she forgot. <laughs> and so I told I her. Well, again. I, I was there for the. I wasn't there, but I was in your life for the second time. But yeah. I want to hear about the first time. No, I think that we're just walking. Uh, I, I it was around the time I was coming out to, uh, like Arden and my roommates and and uh, my closer friends at West Point. Around that time, and, and then I remember I had to go. Maybe I was helping her move into New York, New Orleans mm-hmm. at that time. I'm not sure, but we were walking around New Orleans, and I said, "Hey, just by the way, I think I, I said by the way I'm gay." And she said, "Oh, okay," and she didn't make a big deal about it, which is great because Jamie has a good read on me, where she knows that I wouldn't make want to make a big deal about it. But because she, she didn't make a big deal about it, also I was like, "Did, did she remember me telling her that?" Because <laughs> she's yeah, also very forgetful. <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah." She's like, "No, I remember." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, yeah." It was a, uh, I don't know. It was, it, it was interesting. I think it's just so, so weird that we have to come out as gay. It's so. It's it, just it's, so it's very strange. Weird. But I don't see that changing. Uh, it, it, it looks great right now that people are. So we're in sort of the stage of people accepting being more more championing accepting yourself and like there's nothing wrong with you you're fine um all of that sort of narrative but yeah. i don't see us getting to a place where society doesn't automatically like think you're judge hetero. people as hetero right um and that just is from like years and years and years and years and years and years of that being the norm you know you know what zachary so, if, if if and when we have a kid they're gonna have to come out as straight to us yeah or gay and i'm gonna scream Yes, child. <laughs> th- throw some Madonna on. You listen to this now, you breeder. <laughs> <laughs> Call them breeders. Breeder. Uh, not in my house. Not in my house. Get out. <laughs> Go to the YMCA. <laughs> 
Um, no. Yeah, I guess those are coming out stories, though, for uh, any new listeners. Um, you know, <laughs> we spent a lot of time on those, so we got to quickly go through the other ones. Um, do you find it hard to be gay in the military? I think we already answered that one, that yeah. one already. How did we meet on Instagram? He saw the YouTube video yeah. on Reddit. He reached out. We kind of yeah. talked about that talked already. About that. Um, what made you realize you were gay, or when and what made you realize you were gay? I think there's a lot of things that make you realize you're gay over time, and you're like, hmm. Accepting I was gay was the Adam Lambert thing, and then, like, again, I agree with you, the... Uh, well, also, like, I think that there's a difference because I was slightly confused on whether I uh, was really admiring good looking men or I was you sexually me attracted about that, and that was really to good looking men. Yeah. Because um, I was like, oh, do I really just want to be like them or do I want to them, you know? Yeah. So uh, that was my thing. But I'll say uh, Batman and Robin was definitely. A faggotry bills going off there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which one were you into more? The Batman Robin. or the Robin? I think so too. Yeah. Chris O'Donnell did it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was really good. Um, when and what made you really. Okay. Uh, you have mentioned being religious. How do you re- reconcile being religious when religion rejects us so intensely? So I personally, I think this is more aimed at you, but I'm, I'm personally not religious. I'm kind of spiritual, but um, I'm not religious. And uh, I just think that I just want to be a good person and do good and put out good things. And I think that's all you have to do in the world. Um, oh, big topic there. I, I, we'll do like a, the Cliff Notes version. Um, I I don't consider myself religious anymore, or at least going along with organized religion. I think organized religion is the root of all evil. It truly is. I truly believe that. I think um, I, I, I have seen... I've moved so many different places. I've been so many different towns, gone to so many different churches that I have seen from church to church to church the same exact pattern of people weaponizing religion against people who are othered. You know, Um, years and years and years of that has, has totally put me off of religion. However, I do have a very strong belief in God. And I think it's taken a while for me to accept that my relationship with God has nothing to do with a middleman or no sort of organized religion or nothing. God has blessed me. I feel completely blessed. I have the man of my dreams. I have a wonderful life. Where is he? Um, I don't know what town in England he lives in, but... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I know. It's you, baby. You. Um... I, I feel so blessed. God has truly blessed me. And so I will continue to focus on my relationship with him. And I have to I have to leave it at that. I have to leave it at that. I think, yeah, I'm not willing to play into weaponized religion anymore. But didn't Ariana, Ariana Grande say God is a woman? Or a woman. Whatever God may be. Whatever God may be. Um, However God identifies. Let me add like an extra question. What number of sexual partners is too much? But I don't think we need to go into that one. I think it's however many <laughs> you want. Just be safe. Please be safe. Um, however many you want. <laughs> and uh, with that, I think we uh, we should close out here. Thank you for joining us for brunch. Yes. And we're going to cheers to uh, to a safe and successful coming out journey for you. Um, may all of your coming out experiences be wonderful. Be be at least calm, right? And just kind of accept yourself. Remember, use the boyfriend rule. If if you're too scared to say I'm gay, just say my boyfriend. Wait for it to come up in conversation. And uh, have a really good, safe week. I hope everybody just randomly gets really good news this week. Yes, and we will uh, see you either Monday or Tuesday for morning show. Adios.